Welcome everybody. My name is Louise Herbert and I'm Head of Marketing for Europe and North America for FSS Technologies. And I'm in conversation today with uh, Pahuan Hrazdan, who is our Head of the Asian Region for FSS Technologies. And I'm not going to give you much chance here, Pahuan. You're sitting out of, you sit in, in, in Singapore, you're based in the region. Um, it's a very, very exciting region, a great dynamic, lots of development. Um, and I'm just going to go straight into the first question here. So um, I'd be really interested to know, what do you think, uh, with all the developments, what are the three critical first trends that you're, you've seen over the last 12 months or so? Thanks, Luis. I'm going to uh, give you four trends, but uh, you're right. The region is witnessing a strong growth, as well as the government's push towards digital transformation that will eventually lead to some major changes across industries. Last year in Singapore, here in Singapore, uh, we note we observed that the MAS, the regulator in Singapore, issued new banking licenses, which are largely given to fintechs to set up challenger banks. Uh, mm -hmm. We will also see the similar trend following uh, early next year, where Bank Negara in Malaysia will be issuing new banking licenses. So with the emergence of these new challenger banks and fintechs offering basic financial and payment services, it has definitely led to differentiation via customer experience and reducing operation costs by leveraging new technologies. So the four trends that I would like to talk about, which would really shape the future of banking and fintech would be around a customer experience by offering personalized and intuitive services through digital banking and payments. B, on collaboration. Collaboration between banks, institutions, fintechs is, evidence, is evident, and hence open banking would emerge stronger. To that effect, we saw the coming together of Grab and Singtel uh, mm -hmm. to, 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 to get the license from MAS to, file, to form a challenger bank. The DBS marketplace is another example where the bank is putting together an ecosystem of partner offerings from financial services, property, education, travel and leisure as a one-stop shop to the customer. This would further require a look at ease of integration, faster time to market, etc. The next is around back office automation to ensure that the front end customer experience is delivering the right results. The back office systems need to be agile to be able to deliver straight through processing and provide automation to reduce and minimize human intervention. Uh, this is generally being done, we've, we've seen by leveraging AI embedded technologies that are largely rule driven. And the last is around, uh, you know, fraud management, risk control, and security, which is evident with the growth of e-commerce and digital payments. The rise in mobile commerce will also play a huge part to enhance that. So in essence, for banks, the biggest challenge will be to win customer trust and have to take measures that keep customer in the mind, right from the front-end channel to the back-end processes without compromising on data security and risk control. Mm, exactly. And I, I think I'm going to come back a bit later in terms of the that risk and the, the fraud. Um, but just going back to, to probably the overarching trend, which is the digital adoption. I mean, we've seen with the pandemic, um, inevitably, you know, consumers are, are, are adopters now of digital in, in many different ways. And, and how does that really challenge you um, across the region? So fortunately, uh, despite the pandemic, FSS mm -hmm. APAC has grown and expanded its presence with new customer additions to the existing 150 uh, plus global customer base. Uh, some of the trends that we have observed in our engagements with our customers is uh, customers asking us about how they could leverage new technologies that could coexist with their current IT investments and do, instead of just a complete rip and replace of, of the technologies. So in that context, uh, we seem to have an unfair advantage because FSS offerings are truly componentized and that can be deployed standalone uh, and coexist with the bank's existing ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, one such example is the FSS Omnix platform, which is truly a grounds up built API first cloud native uh, omni-channel platform, which, ex which can coexist with the bank's existing digital and payment systems and can expose transactions and to the customer via a web or mobile device by seamlessly integrating with 
downstream systems like the core banking system. The next, what we've also seen is banks acknowledge the fact that they are, you know, they are, have access to huge amounts of customer data, which is just lying in their in the systems and they don't know what to do. So how could they better leverage this data and put this data to use to better serve their customers? Mm -hmm. And in that regard, the FSS PayPal product is a classic example. Uh, it's a big data analytics platform which really provides multiple dimensions of analytics to the to our customers, which is the banks, uh, data such as card usage analytics, ATM analytics, boss analytics, and even social media analytics that can help them better understand and serve their customers. Mm -hmm. The next is around really around back office automation, uh, with with the front end being so agile and providing new services to the customer. The back back office systems need to be able to deliver. Uh, that deliver through straight through processing uh, the uh, the FSS recon product is a classic example, which is a truly a multi-country, multi-entity, multi-currency, multi-source system uh, enterprise reconciliation engine, which ensures that as banks expand through their channels or even exposing their transactions via open banking, all the data that all the payment data that is coming in is, it be, is able to be reconciled uh, and there is no revenue leakages. Today, uh, the FSS Recon product is being used by 40 plus customers globally. And the last point I'd like to make out here is really about risk mitigation. As the regulators are tightening measures and as the scheme providers are uh, defining newer uh, compliance mechanisms, the FSS security product, which is 3DS, ensures that all such guidelines provided by the schemes, et cetera, embedded into our product, they are proactively delivered to our customer so that they don't fall short of any kind of compliance. Mm. So, Bowen, you, you've outlined a very, very complex and, and a very di you know, exciting dynamic. And obviously there's a lot of actors within that. And fintechs are, you know, we've seen this across every region, stepping in with um, some great services and offerings and often um, you know, low-cost uh, payment services. Uh, what is FSS doing to address that? So um, we believe collaboration is the key. And we've seen that this is not only relevant for banks and PSPs, but even FSS is taking a very collaborative approach. While some may view fintechs as competition, we look at them as opportunities where we uh, look at partnering with fintechs, not only fintechs, but with other technology vendors, cloud infra providers, and SIs. Uh, our broad portfolio uh, solutions, which spans across issuance, acquiring, Digital banking, e-wallet for financial inclusion, security analytics gives us an unfair advantage that we could complement the fintech's offering with some of our point solutions because they are designed grounds up in a componentized and a modular architecture. So this gives us uh, new opportunities and it's a collaborative win-win situation that we see for FSS and also the fintechs. Mm. So it really does go beyond the coexistence. It's it's really is the collaboration that's the the C factor that's really absolutely going to yeah. absolutely yeah. And of course, we're all faced we're all faced as all the different actors in that as you say very exciting dynamic. With as the penetration of payments increases, also comes fraud inevitably. So I just like to talk about what are your views on on what recommendations even in terms of the hygiene factors that need to be put into play. Yes, that's the right word, Louise. Hygiene factors, compliance and fraud mitigation is non-negotiable. Mm. Uh, what we have seen is that um, poorly designed authentication experiences to counter fraud have an adverse impact on customer engagement. The current 3DS protocol, where the transactions are authenticated through a static password or a one-time password, has inherent limitations. Right, the additional step during the checkout process results in high abandonment among customers. This is what some customers really don't want. It has to be seamless. In that regard, the FSS's, FSS's award-winning uh, Secure 3D, which is a real-time risk-based authentication solution, 
and compliant with 3DS uh, 2.0 guidelines provides a comprehensive approach to secure card not present transactions. Uh, we are very proud to say that today the same solution has been deployed at 15 plus banks globally and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's securing about 120 million transactions annually and is proven solution to strengthen online transaction security and encourage the growth of e-commerce transaction. So just to add on further on that, the FSS 3DS solution supports explicit and implicit cardholder transaction authentication. At the heart of this engine is an adopt adaptive authentication engine where issuers can exploit a wide set of parameters, cardholder, device, location, merchant to determine if the transactions were initiated by a legitimate cardholder. Based on these and other contextual variables, the solution generates a risk score. Uh, suspect transactions with high risk score are automatically stepped up for additional verification, such as one-time password. This renders protection against fraud, increases uh, increasing complete sales and delivering a better transaction experience for cardholders. Mm. So I'm just going to go back now to one of the probably the, the key strategic areas that's always been there for, for FSS, and that's around issuance. So I'll be very curious to hear what your plans are for the region. That yes, that is, yeah. that's true. Um, so today, as we see, FSS serves 40 over customers globally uh, our, for the unified issuance platform that we have across uh, different kind of uh, Card, card management schemes uh, and products from ranging from the virtual card to a prepaid card to a debit card, etc. Uh, today, uh, we are one of the largest uh, underlying technology running about 800 million cards globally for our issuance platform. Um, the key trend, what we are seeing is a digital card first program. In today's digital uh, first world, banks and fintechs need to provide digitally native and even digital first experiences that cardholders expect and offer more transparency for, and control for the cardholder. The FSS unified issuance uh, platform supports both banks and fintechs in implementing such digital first strategies. Uh, using the bank, for example, using the bank app, customers can order uh, a virtual card within a few minutes. Not only mm -hmm. that, uh, they are empowered with uh, the ability to set card control limits, card control spends by channel and merchant when they receive their cards. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several use cases um, from a one-time e-commerce transaction, specific purpose uh, expense cards, payroll cards, gig worker card supply. We've seen a lot of use cases for such virtual cards uh, in the market. Another trend, and thankfully uh, we've seen this largely because of the pandemic, is uh, contactless transactions. So post-pandemic, customer fear of contagion has resulted in spiraling growth of tap and pay transactions. Mm -hmm. Predominantly, Contactless cards are used for low value transactions, typically within the range of 100 US dollars as they are not authenticated. Mm. So FSS is bringing new innovation to the market which allows customers to use contactless cards for any denomination of transactions. In that regard, our partnership with Zwipe uh, is, a good, is, a, is a good collaborative approach to delivering value to the customer. Um, this collaboration with Zwipe uh, Swipe offers a technology uh, that provides a battery-less, that enables a battery-less, ultra-low power, self-contained biometric authentication for payment cards. Uh, this is something really what we are seeing uh, is one of the new trends and is being adopted by the fintechs to ensure contactless payments. Mm, no, I can't. I, for one, can't wait for that little that contactless card where I can put my thumb over it and know that I can go beyond the 50 euros or whatever it is and limits. So, uh, so I don't have to touch that keyboard. But um, and maybe that's let's 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 end this conversation with that little bit of future scoping. So I'll probably be a bit mean here. But if I was to ask you, how would you define the bank of the future, the consumer of the future? So um, we believe banks are here to stay and redefine how they cater to the customer needs, contrary to some views that fintechs will be replacing banks. Mm. Uh, we believe the with developments in open banking, 
payments and banking for customers may become instant, individualized, invisible, and embedded. Banks are also remodeling, uh, you know, their service offerings in the marketplace. This again goes back to the basic fundamentals that we iterate as core essentials for any bank to ensure relevance to the business and customer. Uh, and I would sum it up with the four key essentials. One is the end customer experience with a strong omni-channel presence, irrespective of device channel. Um, the second is largely on data-driven decision engine, decision-making and decisioning engine to better offer personalized and intuitive services. Uh, AI-driven back office operations to automate and make the processes set, you know, straight through processing and aiming for straight through processing to ser better serve their customers. And lastly, cloud is ine inevitable, leveraging cloud technologies to reduce internal technology costs. Uh, and even look, considering a utility-based uh, pricing model uh, that don't burden banks with a, a huge CapEx expenditure upfront. Mm. So many, many more excitement Lots of new initiatives coming your way. So um, I would like to uh, to end here. We could go on forever, I think, but so uh, we have to end. So I would like to thank you very, very much, Bawan. It's been really fascinating. And uh, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you. Thank you, Louise.